Hello everyone, this is Lolly. I recently did a video showing my envelope collection. Would you believe after I did that video, I found another box of, of envelopes. So, okay, and they're double window, but they're a little shorter than these ones are. These are the legal size. So we're going to make a project today. And I said that we are going to start using envelopes in projects so we can burn through our stash. So here's the first thing I've made, and I want to show you how I did this and how you can make one. So this is a sealed envelope, purely decorative, but it is a bookmark, you know, page minder in for your books, your journals. It could be great for a pocket in a larger journal or a lap book. What you're going to need is a window envelope of any size. It can have one or two windows, it can be the legal size, the letter size, whatever you choose. You need a napkin, and I think this time I'm going to use this really pretty uh, Paris napkin. You need Mod Podge or other decoupage glue or your own homemade uh, recipe, which there are lots of videos how to make your own Mod Podge. And um, there's two ways of doing this. You can either split the envelope, like the sides, and then open it completely flat and do it all at once, which would be easier. But if you like to leave your envelope um, sealed on the sides like this, then you will need to cut a piece of cardstock that fits the length of the um, envelope, but is longer than this flap here, and then wrap that in either wax paper or freezer paper with the shiny side out. And that's just so that the Mod Podge doesn't soak through and, and stick your whole envelope shut. So that's only if you leave the sides attached and don't open it. Um, but also if you do it this way, you have to you know, work on one side, let it dry, work on another side, let it dry, and you're constantly going back and forth. So it's a lot faster to just slit this open and work that way, which is how I'm going to show you on the new one. You would also need some decorative card stock from behind your windows, or you can stamp in on a piece of card stock and put that in there. And that only needs to be big enough for the envelope. It doesn't have to fill the whole card, which is what I did. My card stock only comes down to here. And you also need scraps of card stock for all your little layering of your embellishments. And if you choose, you know, you can stitch on it, but you don't have to. And also you can use distressed ink, which I used black soot. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to prep this. So I am going to do what I said and slit the ends open. Now you can just run a blade up the corner or you could just slice a tiny bit off. It really doesn't matter. You could also steam it open if you want. I'm not that ambitious. So I am cutting this. I barely have a little strip. See that? That's all I cut off, but it's enough that it opens up. And I like to make sure that the fold or the bottom of the envelope is at top and I'm pulling down away from that so I'm not bunching up my project. Now you see how this will be so much easier to work with and I can uh, do the whole thing all at once instead of having to do one side, flipping it over and doing another. So I'm putting this with the paper, the out of the envelope up, that side is going down. I'm going to kind of work my folds a little bit. And you want a non-stick surface underneath your work. Okay. And this is going to be the front of the envelope. So what I need is to separate and take just the top layer of my napkin. If you want, you can press the napkin first um, before separating the layers or after separating the layers. It's up to you. I'm going to use some tape to pull my layers apart here. Now this is a three layer napkin. I don't throw these away. I actually use them for tissue paper or you know like um, for Kleenex basically. I get asked a lot if I would organize napkin swaps and you know there are already groups on Facebook which do napkin swaps and usually like those are decoupage groups will do napkin swaps but I, I don't organize them. So again, I can press this out. I, I wouldn't use steam necessarily, just press it out to get more of the folds out of it. Okay, and then I want to center this so I can see where I want my, my Eiffel Tower here. And I do like it on the bottom here. I have to look at this fold because I don't want to go over that fold there. 
right about there is a good place. And this will get me the crown, and this would be right there is the front of my envelope. And that's really pretty, and I also have an Eiffel Tower coming down here, a little flower up there. It's pretty. Now what I need to do is to get this coated in Mod Podge pretty quickly and go all around the windows without actually hitting the window. You don't want to dawdle too much or you may have to go over it again. And I, I hold down on the window when I need to have something to hold on to here. I'm just getting a little extra right there and again working quickly I'm going to take the Eiffel Tower that I had figured out where I wanted that and lay that right about there and gently push that into place. Now if your hand gets wet from this, you don't want to keep touching the napkin after your hand gets wet or you may tear the napkin. You can also take a piece of cellophane or non-stick surface, lay that down and really give it a good rub. But also what you miss in getting it adhered now, you will basically fix it when you go over it again. Once this dries, we're going to go over it with um, two more coats of Mod Podge, again, working around the window, but not actually going on the window. I'm going to let that set for a good 20 minutes and come back. Well, I actually let this dry for several hours just because I was busy. So what I'm going to do now is just trim the napkin off of this, and I'm going to give it two more coats of Mod Podge, or at least one, you know, one is fine, and making sure I go around the windows, not on the windows. And let's do it. I'm actually being careful because I don't want to tear the napkin. And you see there will be some wrinkling of the napkin as I go along where there were like air bubbles under it. Okay, let that dry and get this brush rinsed out. So that is good and dry, and I also took a fine brush like this, and I put another coat of Mod Podge all the way around the windows, and so that is dry. So what I'm going to do now is take water and dampen the napkin on the inside of the window, and this is the part that doesn't have the Mod Podge on it, and it soaks right in there. And so once that's done, all you can do is just grab it and you can pull the napkin off of here because again, we did not Mod Podge that to that acetate window there. And if you don't mind little fuzzies around there, you can just leave that in there and that's what I usually did. All right. Now, we need to figure out, again, I don't know if you could tell, but this is really fuzzy, um, and you can clean that up if you want. I kind of like that look, so I cleaned it up more on my first version. So what we need to do now is figure out what we want to go in that window. Now, I have some cardstock from this Dress My Craft Pink Smoke Collection that I used in my other one. And I used this, but you can see there's nothing in the bottom here. So the question is that, do I really want that or do I want to put something that is taller in there? I do have this as well. Now, I really like that. And I do have the floral, but you see, I just think it gets kind of lost in the floral of this. And I think this is way prettier. So all I need to do is measure how big that needs to be, and it doesn't need to cover the whole envelope, and I don't need to go beyond my fold lines here, so I am looking at about, for this one, three and a half by four and a half. 
and you can see that it will just fit in there as well. So what I need to do now is to get this adhered in there and I'm going to use a tape runner and go around here. And then I just need to seal my envelope back up. So I can use a tape runner or a glue. I'm going to work this over and smooth it out. Now remember we've got Mod Podge right here. So um, the first time I did this, I used Mod Podge to seal that up uh, to right here. I Mod Podge this whole flap and closed it right over there and then I clamped it. Um, so right now, what I think I'm going to do is work on these sides. So I'm going to go ahead and you could use a liquid glue here if you want. If you were going to use this as a pocket, meaning like if you wanted to use this as uh, like a clutch or a pouch, then I would use liquid glue and not the tape runner. Okay, so now uh, let's get the this sealed with Mod Podge. So all I'm going to do is just get this entire flap here. And plus it already has the gum, you know, the, the seal that I can lick, which I'm not going to lick. Fold that over, and this is going to take a little while. It's not like working with, you know, gluing paper to paper. So we have to realize that it takes Mod Podge a while to hold. So what I'm going to do is kind of clamp this right here and clamp it on the other side. And just keep pushing that together. I also have some of these, these really big binder clips like that. That will help. Okay, so I did the same one, same thing to this one. So now we can look and see, you know, if any of these papers would work. There's this feather thing that might be actually kind of cute. There is um, kind of a lighter print here. You know, it's not quite as intense as the other print I've been using. Too much for me. Butterflies, eh, it might be a little too busy. I don't know. I'm just so fond of seeing, ooh, I really like the print on this one too. I'm so fond of seeing that print in the window. I decided to go back with one of this paper that I really liked back here. Right here. And I'm going to get a piece of this in there. And I said three and a half by four and a half. Now this clamp, I'm going to take this one off of here now and put it on this one. And this one is good. Okay, and now we just need to come back. You do not need to sew on this. You saw that I sewed on the other one. I really like it, and I will sew on this one again. You can see I kept switching from straight stitch to zigzag. I would change my width of the zigzag, go back to straight, narrow zigzag, wide zigzag. So I made a combination of that, and I also stitched down in between the two windows. And I will do that again to these as well. Okay, so these have been stitched. The next thing I wanted to do was to just cut up a bunch of little bits and pieces from scraps that I have that I can layer on here and make an embellishment like you see that I did with this one right here. Just a set of paper pieces. So I'm using this um, set here, this die set from Elizabeth Craft Designs called Planner Labels. I do have it in my shop. So one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 of those plus these are actually hole reinforcers, but they could be used anywhere in the project as well. So it's this set of dies. I just went through my scraps and picked out some pieces that would look good with any of these. And I also 
and I, I cut this piece that said spring out. I don't know if I'm going to use it. And also just scraps that uh, weren't necessarily used with hole punching. And also I used, I can use uh, just regular hole punches like parts of circles and round punches, etc. So basically I'm just going to start playing around and seeing. I like to keep the word Paris in there. See what I can come up with. I don't want to interfere with the Eiffel Tower there. And I did distress all my edges. So my uh, everything here has the distress on it. This is, I don't think I'm going to use that. Paris. Might even come up here and partially cover up one of the windows. It's kind of spread out, all because I'm trying to save that word Paris there. And then I'll glue this all together. Actually, I think I'll put this lower down. Another thing is when you get this little cluster of papers, if you put them all together, um, and you get them glued. I just ran these through the machine and stitched right across them before gluing them down, but that's just an extra little, an extra little look, you know, uh, something to add and more interest to it. Now I'm running this a little bit off the edge, so I might need to cut that off. We'll see. And the other thing is, I also have these little chevron pieces that cut out of here, and I could add those. So I still have these two pieces. I don't know if that white is just too much. I'm thinking I need something right here, so I might just get one of my regular hole punches like this. And let's see what other scrap I have that I can use. Okay. And you could always put um, depth to it, you know, but I, I feel like if it's going to be a, a book page minder or something like that, then I don't want that really having gemstones and things sticking up so much from it. I just had a little thought here. I think I'm going to add a teeny bit of lace. And I would like to find this kind of cording in white, but I don't have any. So I'm going to use the black. Maybe use it sparingly and just come off the side right there, like just up to the Eiffel Tower. Just a little bit right there. And now for this one, I did the same thing. I used those dies. And this is, I don't know that I'll use this, but it was left over from cutting out that rectangle. I've got the circle, this, and I also just used a hole punch of a butterfly and I also colored it in with, it's black paper and I used metallic pencils on it for a video that I'm going to be showing soon. And another little scrap here. I don't know that I'll use it, but let's try. I like this green a lot, but I don't know. I also just took a circle punch and I punched out just a piece of it. I don't know that I'll use that. Let's see. I think I like that better. Many of you have commented about how quickly I can make decisions. And part of that is just because I'm on camera. And I know that I need to do it. So I don't allow myself to get too um, bent out of shape, you know, so to speak about what I'm picking out to use. <laughs> I just have to say I'm going to do it and whether I I could have done something different, I'm just going to do it anyway. Okay, I'm 
might. I'm liking the dark colors. I'm not sure that I really like the white, but I might just tuck it under there a little bit and put the butterfly. And it's still, I really don't like it as much. It's too white. Maybe if I had some off-white paper, it would be better. There we go. Okay, now let's get this glued down. I'm not going to stitch on this one. And you'll see that I'm also going upwards into the um, into the window there a little bit too. Normally I would fold the wings up on that butterfly, but I just feel like um, since I want, I just want this to be flat. And you'll notice on this one, I actually put a tab on it, and that is this die here. I just cut it out and folded it in half. This little hole is so delicate that when I folded it in half and glued it, I went ahead and put Mod Podge all the way around that to give it some stiffness so that when I this would not pull that paper apart. But I don't necessarily have to have them all looking the same. I could also just do an eyelet. I'm going to do the big hole and put an eyelet in there. Now these are in my shop, these wide eyelets, and I love them. I think they're so pretty. Oh, love it, love it. And let's see, let's do that to this one as well. Okay, and we want a pink one this time. Does that one work? Or do I want the really light one? I think I want the light one. I will give you a link down below also on how to set perfect eyelets in case that's something that really confuses you and you have a difficult time with. Okay, so let's bring those back in here. We have these two, which we can always add ribbon to the top, and we have this one as well. There's the backs, and you can see the stitch marks on the back. If you don't like that, you can stitch them before you fold the envelope back together. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for creating with me. I hope that really inspires you to get your envelopes out and start playing.